It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. Thanks again for joining us. Our guest is Kate Sweeney. Kate is a professor of psychology at UC Riverside, and she is engaged in some fascinating studies, at least to me. You know, I'm very interested in genetics. And you looked at how people respond to the possibility of getting genetic testing connected to disease potential. Explain. That's right. So in this particular study, we were looking at direct-to-consumer genetic testing. So this is the kind of testing you can go on the internet, order an at-home uh, testing kit, and just send your saliva in, get your results back at home, and I did it. peruse them. I did it. I have not done it yet, yes. actually. Well, I know. <laughs> why? I guess, and are you a, a subject, a case study for what your results showed us? Possibly. I think, uh, well, first of all, there is some research to suggest that people differ in the extent to which they want to learn information, just in general. So, so, so what did the study say? I mean, you had some serious findings. That's right, yeah. So, uh, well, in our particular study, we found um, not so much that we were looking at differences between people's preferences for information, but more how they reacted to information that we provided. Uh, so we provided some of the people in our study with uh, exclusively positive information about this kind of genetic testing, the benefits, things like that it's very accessible, it's fairly easy, uh, the test results are quick, it's private. And then other people with only the negative information, all accurate information, by the way, but uh, more the cons of testing, things like that it's a little bit expensive, it may not be fully accurate, uh, there's no government oversight, that sort of thing. And then other people, we gave both the good and bad information, kind of a balanced and approach. And what did you find? So we found basically that when you uh, tell people the positive information, they were very receptive to the testing. They were interested uh, in testing. They saw it as very beneficial. Um, but when you provided either negative or balanced information, people were not as interested in testing. They seemed very attuned to that negative information. What I'm wondering, and I'm not sure if your test looked at this question or if you know otherwise, if the disease that you test for has a resolution that is positive, for example, the BRCA breast gene, right. if you test positive for it, it's radical, but you can get a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Whereas Huntington's, there's no cure, no treatment. Right. Did you, are there distinctions made when there's disease differentials? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting with uh, direct-to-consumer genetic testing because it tests for a huge variety, as you know, uh, a huge variety of traits and, and disease risk and everything like mm -hmm. that. And so um, there may be some things in that set that, you know, may be more controllable than others. And there is other research that suggests that when people believe that they can do something in response to some sort of bad right. test result, they'll be more likely to engage in testing. But if they believe they cannot, That's right. they're less likely to yeah, engage. more avoidant of that information. What yeah. about? people who know or believe there's a genetic risk. Like we know with breast cancer, there's a very high genetic risk if your mother, or aunt, sister had it. Right. Are they more likely to test or are they more likely to put their head in the sand? You know, it's interesting. Um, again, our study didn't really look at that, right. but the, uh, the research out there is kind of mixed. It, it looks like in some cases, if you, if you um, make clear to people that the test will give them a pretty good sense of whether they're going to be at risk, you know, if it really uh, provides right. heightened risk by getting a positive test result, then they're more likely to test. Uh, but it's a little bit mixed, actually. I think that in some cases makes people kind of nervous and they I, may be avoided. I do want to tell uh, my viewers, our viewers, that um, my test came back and I was shocked because I'm a Jewish American and Jewish Americans are filled with genetic maladies and I came up negative on everything. I right. was absolutely stunned because sure. most Jews have something floating around in their background. As you look towards the future, mm -hmm. Where do you see genetic testing moving in terms of consumer acceptability? You know, that's a really good question. I, I think that um, we're, we're still really in the earliest stages of particularly this at-home style of testing. Uh, there's a lot of debate right now as to whether people should even be doing this. You know, it's outside the realm of uh, a doctor-patient relationship. You're and what not about insurance if you test positive. Exactly right. People are very nervous about that. Right. Uh, so it's still very unclear whether we should even be encouraging this I kind of you. testing. Kate Swinney, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Very, very interesting. I appreciate it. Thank you. She is Kate Swinney, a professor at UC Riverside in Psychology. I'm Brad Palmer. It's back to HLN. Hello, I'm Senator Bob Huff. The deadline for applying for the California Senate Fellows Program is approaching quickly. I would encourage all students to consider this very worthwhile and valuable training program. The Fellows Program gives college graduates the opportunity to work full-time in state Senate offices like mine at the State Capitol in Sacramento. Fellows are paid a stipend, receive health benefits, and earn graduate credit. Contact my office for more information and an application. The deadline to apply for the program is February 23rd.